This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Today's video is pretty exciting. I'm gonna be showing you what's in my camera bag, but before we get into that, I realize you've never really seen what the studio looks like. This is it. It's coming along nice. I'll probably do a full tour soon, but for now, this is what it looks like. Today I'm gonna to be showing you what's in, oh, that was so loud. What's in my camera bag. I've wanted to do one of these videos for a while. The gear I'm using is always changing and I thought it would be cool to just show you what kind of things I'm taking with me on photo shoots. This is what it looks like on a regular day when I go out to make some pictures. This isn't necessarily all the gear that I use. There are different things that I'll interchange in and out of here, but on a regular day when I'm going out to make pictures somewhere, this is what the bag looks like. This is how I set it up and all the gear that I take with me. I also recently picked up a lot of new parts for the RZ67, so I'll show you those in this video. And I'm also gonna go out and make some pictures with those later. But for now, we're gonna start with the backpack that I use. This is the Peak Design Everyday Bag, I believe it's called. It's a 20 liter small backpack that's really compact, but it fits everything I need perfectly. For being a backpack that carries all of my camera equipment, it's definitely pretty small and compact. I can fit everything in here, no problem. My favorite thing about this backpack is probably that it's more like a shell rather than a fabric bag. Even without anything in here, it really holds its shape and it's nice and protective. There's super thick padding everywhere. I'm gonna start with my tripod, which usually lives on the outside of my backpack right here. I just put it through one of these straps. Can you even see that? I have no idea but it's a really nice way of clipping it to the outside of your bag and it doesn't necessarily take up any room inside the actual backpack. How nice. Take one leg, put it through the strap of the backpack and then you just let it sit. It's made by ProMaster. I've had it for over a year, no complaints at all. It holds a camera really steady. That's basically all that you need a tripod to do. So. I'd recommend it. Okay, with all that out of the way, I think it's time to get into the actual backpack. I'm gonna start with this top compartment right here. This is the laptop compartment of the bag. In terms of the main compartments of the bag, you would think that you open the bag right here from this top compartment like any normal bag. But the way I have this thing set up is that you open it from the sides because this backpack has a pretty cool internal structure where you can have different shelves essentially. So I have three shelves set up here. They're all padded. They're all dividable. It's a really cool system. Uh, you can get super geeky about all this backpack stuff, but it works really well. So on both sides here, I have two, this kind of looks like an elephant now or something. I have two separate compartments here. You can keep a bunch of stuff in here. First thing is the light meter. I keep this in a big pocket on the side. Then I have over here just a bunch of assorted cables. This is one for my flash, which you'll see in a second. I have a cable release in here. Very handy for nighttime and long exposure stuff. That's basically it for this side. I'm gonna close that back up. On this side, some more stuff, more charging cables. Over here, I have an extra battery for my camera because you never know when that's gonna die. And then I'm just gonna go through the main shelves of the bag, if you will. Right here at the top, a box of Portra, pretty essential. Usually I'll have more than one box in there, but that's all that there was today. This is kind of where it gets pretty interesting. In the bottom shelf compartment, I have my camera, which is the Mamiya RZ67. No surprise there, but I do just keep it in this bottom compartment. One of my favorite things about this bag is that it fits this camera so well. I have the 90 millimeter lens on here, which is the lens that I'm using most often, a waist level viewfinder and just a regular 120 film back. This is the setup I've used for ages. Fun camera, I've used this thing for so long now, probably 95% of my work is shot on this thing. Super satisfying, very tactile as well. And my favorite thing about it is that it's modular which I've talked about for ages, but I've never actually picked up any other parts for this camera, which is, I guess, the second half of this video. First thing I picked up was the 65 millimeter lens for the RZ. This is a little bit wider than the 90 that I'm usually using. It's an F4 lens, so it's nicer for a little bit more landscape style photos. I don't know if you can see this, but the 65 sits in this little compartment right here, which 
Let me zoom in. So you have these shelves that can kind of flip up and divide the bag. So that's where the 65 goes. And then you can fold that down if you're not using it and see all the way through. In a bit, I'm also gonna go out and make some more photos with this thing with my friend Wesley and with the other things that I'm about to show you. In the same compartment that I have the 65 millimeter in, I also have a flash for the RZ. This is a Nikon speed light. I didn't choose this flash for any specific reason, but it's a secondhand double A flash. It works really well. The way you connect this thing to the camera is with this PC cord that I pulled out earlier. So this just goes into the side of the flash and then into the lens of the RZ. It does everything you might want a flash to do. So I'm gonna be shooting more with this thing in the future and maybe I'll make a video on it. We'll see. I'm gonna zip up the bag because the top compartment can just be accessed normally through here. The first thing in here, this might not be so film related, but it is something I use very often. It's the Sony RX100 Mark 7, I think. It's a little Sony point shoot camera. It shoots 4K video. In my opinion, sometimes it looks better than my main camera and it has the flip up screen. So super useful camera for making YouTube videos. If you're looking for a video camera that works well on the go and is compact, this is probably the one. It also has this little pop-up viewfinder. How cute is that? It's an electronic viewfinder. If you need a vlogging camera, I'd recommend this one. This is pretty expensive for a point and shoot camera, but in terms of video quality, it's probably the best that I've seen out of a tiny pocket camera like this. Moving on, the next things in the bag are probably some of the most exciting things to me that I've picked up recently. The first is the eye level viewfinder for the RZ67. You might know that for the longest time now, I've been using the waist level finder, which is super compact. My friend Roman has also been using one of these for ages. It does add a lot of weight to the RZ, but it is a pretty nice experience shooting with this thing. Just being able to work at eye level instead of waist level for landscape style photos is much better, in my opinion. Just in case the camera wasn't heavy enough already, is the left hand grip. You basically screw this into the bottom of the camera. In my opinion now, the camera is much easier to handle with this left hand grip on there, and you can also fire the camera with this right here. So it's a mechanical trigger that passes down to the bottom. I'm gonna go out and actually make some pictures with this setup now because it feels almost entirely like a new camera. So I'll share some of my thoughts with you. Having this eye level viewfinder, the grip and a new wider lens really changes the whole experience of shooting. So I think it'll be fun to go out, make some pictures and share those with you. That goes right there. There you go. That good, good. Oh, it's a really nice viewfinder. Yeah, right? It's not that this is so heavy. I mean, it is heavy. Yeah. But it's that it's cumbersome to hold without this handle yeah, because yeah. it's a box and you're like, Whereas with the Pentax X7, with the handle, you can just walk around with it. Oh, also now I can move the right direction. <laughs> it's not inverted anymore. It's not inverted anymore. Yeah. That's nice. Eighty-nine. It's from eighty-nine, so I can shoot it at eight hundred, four hundred. I mean, I could, I could shoot at two hundred. I think I'll shoot it at 200. Put it in there. Wow. Turn it on. Love it. How was the modeling session? 
no, I feel underpaid, <laughs> but happy. Yeah, it's a good day, beautiful, sunny. Uh, hopefully a new photo from my profile. <laughs> If you have one of these cameras, I recommend you at least try out the eye level viewfinder, see if you like it. It's definitely a totally different experience working with that camera, and I think the pictures turned out great. Finally, I want to thank Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Squarespace is an incredible online website building platform that you can use to build your photography portfolio online. I've been using Squarespace to host my website for the longest time now and I recently rebuilt my website with their incredibly customizable templates. I started with a basic template and worked my way up from there. If you do want to check out Squarespace, you can hit the link in my description for a 14 day free trial and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Willem for 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. Guys, if you made it all the way here, thank you so much for watching. You can check out my Instagram in the description. It's at Willem Verb. That's it for now. Peace.